Here we go. It's Monday morning on KSJE, and it's time for our Monday Reboot segment. Lewis Campbell is joining me via Skype and Zoom this morning. Lewis, good morning. Morning. Good to see you. I can't, I can't remember what what thing we're using, but it's Zoom. We are using Zoom this morning, not Skype. Anyway, right. it's good to see you. Good to get connected with you to talk about technology. And uh, the one thing I know that we've been wanting to talk about for a couple of weeks now is this story about spinach. Yeah, spinach. What's going so on with spinach? Not my favorite, but I'll, I'll bear with you. <laughs> I think this is amazing. Yeah, I'm not Popeye either, but still, I think this is pretty amazing, right? So engineers at MIT. Right have been able to transform spinach into sensors capable of detecting explosive materials, right? Then they send that information back to the scientists via um, a wireless connection, right? So the, spinach the, spinach is send, the spinach sends it back? The, the spinach interface, here, I'll explain it. Okay, okay. So when, when the spinach roots detect the presence of not, what, what are called nitro aromatics in groundwater, right. it's it's stuff that's often found in explosives, right? There's, the spinach is engineered to have carbon nanotubes. So the plant leaves literally emit a signal. And then that signal is read by an infrared camera. And then the infrared camera is connected to a device that sends an email alert to the scientists. Okay, I followed that. I don't know how, yeah. but I did. Interesting. Um, that's really amazing research, right? I mean, who, who knew that spinach could do all that, right? Well, biotechnology is, is an up-and-coming thing. I mean, there's a lot of scientists doing a lot of research with trying to figure out ways that we can use, you know, biological things to do stuff like that. Right. So this is, to me, this is pretty cool. That, that is pretty cool. And this is from MIT, you said, right? So kudos yes. to them. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Well, I like that story. And I don't have to eat it, so I'm okay with it. It's even better. <laughs> what else? You have to eat the spinach. Right. What else is going on? Well, people have probably heard in the news for a while now, um, there's been a lot of fallout with all the things that have been happening in Washington, D.C. On the tech side, one of the most interesting things is now um, Smartmatic uh, and Dominion are two of the big companies that make voting machines. And of course, during the course of the election, they were, you know, there were certain people um, in the news that were really slamming those companies saying that the voting machines were, you know, participating in fraud or allowing fraud. Well, now the companies are fighting back. Dominion threatened a lawsuit. Some Smartmatic actually filed a $2.7 billion lawsuit against Fox News to recoup, you know, losses right. and the damages they've had because this has really hurt those companies. And, and the thing is that, you know, Libel suits almost never, people almost never win libel suits because you have to prove that somebody deliberately, you know, put out false information about you and you have to prove that it had a detrimental effect. Well, these companies lost a lot of money and the information that these news agencies put out about them is, you know, and I'm not taking a political stance here, but it was false. I mean, there was no truth to it whatsoever. Right. So there's a there's a good chance that they, you know, they'll prevail to some degree in these lawsuits. Interesting. And if I could just add a little bit, they were, they were kind of repeating these unsubstantiated reports about these, these companies, right? And that's what got them into so much trouble, I think, is not that maybe they just did it once or twice, but that they kept repeating it for weeks or months at a time. And I think that's what got the companies finally to say, look, enough's enough. And, you know, we've asked you to stop and you haven't stopped. So now our lawyers are going to ask you to stop. And, you're still not going to stop, so now we're going to take you to court, I think, is where we are, right? Yeah, and I think, and, and like, again, I'm not trying to make a political statement no, here. No, sure. But, you know, from a, from a technology and free speech standpoint, this is something we have to watch because it'll definitely have an effect on how companies and news, news organizations and other people, you know, work going forward. Right. Uh, and, I, and there's so much that's going on in D.C. You know, the, the whole idea of, about possibly modifying Section 230, which we've talked about before, all of this stuff has an effect on tech. Very true. And um, the fact that they're filing this lawsuit and seeking, what, $2.7 billion, seven yeah. billion dollars in, in damages tells you just how much damage maybe these things are doing to their, their business. 
Um, and that's just one company. There are a couple others, I think, out there, too, that are considering similar stuff. And and Fox News is one defendant, and there, there may be more. So anyway, stay tuned is, I guess, what we would say, right? Yep. yep. And those are just damages, and I assume that maybe there'd be maybe a jury could find compensatory damages, too, or other things? Well, I haven't dug into it to, I mean, maybe you have and I haven't. I haven't dug into, to, into it to find out about, you know, how much of those are damages and how much of those are proposed compensatory or stuff like that. But, yeah, you, you know, there's no, right. there's no set bound to how large or how small this could be. Um, right. I think even the fact that it was done sets a precedent. So. Well, sure. And to your point, normally these things are really hard to win because these public companies and public people, and it's, it's very hard to kind of prove malice or intent. Um, but these companies, this company particularly seems to have a pretty strong case because they've got a lot of rec- a lot of on the record stuff from broadcast television and, and internet sites that they can, they can use in their, in their defense. So in their prosecution, I should say. So we'll see what happens. Interesting. All right. Just a couple of minutes remaining this morning. What else is on your radar this week? Well, in Nevada, the, someone in the legislature, I think it might've been the government governor. I'm not sure has proposed a bill that would essentially allow tech companies to function as governments. Um, so yeah, it's the governor. And he wants to launch something called Innovation Zones in Nevada. Hmm. And the key thing here is that he wants to, you know, basically give them powers to form, uh, to, to with companies with large areas of land to, you know, have the same authority as counties, including the ability to impose taxes, form school districts, form courts, provide government services. Um, I don't. You know, there's no gauge on whether or not anybody thinks this bill could actually make it to law, but it's interesting that someone is, you know, proposing this, and it's specifically targeting tech companies in Nevada, giving them the ability to do that. Interesting. Well, and I think, you know, we always talk about how people live in Facebook land, maybe, but I don't know if you literally want to do that, so I'm not sure how (laughs) that would work. Well, they they would have to own at least 78 square miles of land. Okay. Okay. Well, I think that's pocket change for people like Google and Facebook, but yep. we will uh, we'll see how that goes. All right, interesting. Well, Lewis, thank you so much for joining me this week. Always appreciate it. Hey, thank you, and have a great week, everybody. All right, you too. Thank you very much. That is Lewis Campbell. He is with Synergy Computer Systems, my guest on our Monday Reboot segment every Monday right here on KSJE Farmington.